And again, some people might say that they, should, they might think about this in terms of subtraction, because some of these are negative, but that's a confusing way to think about it. We should just add all the components. It's just that some of the numbers we're adding are negative numbers. In fact, most of the numbers we ended up, ended up adding here were negative numbers. OK, um, so now, in a sense, we figured out the net force. So if this was a mastering physics assignment, you could probably enter the answer now, because they would probably say to express your answer in terms of x hat and y hat. So what would we say the answer is in terms of x hat and y hat? Good, except, that was good except for the word and. Comma, I guess. Still not quite right. No, oh plus. Right, Sorry. the whole point of x hat and y hat is to allow us to just add those together to get yeah. the overall vector. That's important when you're actually doing mastering physics because they only accept the answer in one particular way. So are we not finding the, I know you said on mastering physics they would just ask for the x and y components for the answer, but are we ever finding, like, adding those vectors to find, like, I guess I'm, no, I, that's not what I'm getting to. So I'm wondering, so those, those components that we just found, is, are those the components of the, the vector that comes from adding F? That's right. To F3 too? That's right. Well, I think you're, you're, you're reaching towards a really very important question. Um, there's, we mentioned this briefly earlier, there's two different ways to describe a, a vector. For one way is you can describe its components. Mm -hmm. And the other way is you can describe the overall vector and its direction. Mm -hmm. Both of those give you the same information, and you just have to give, answer the question the way they ask you. Okay. In your homework on the computer, they usually want you to break things into components. Yeah. However, on exams, they usually don't want this. On exams, they would probably say, give the magnitude and direction of the net force. And then they might not give you full credit for this. Now, what they, um, then there would be another step, which would, would be we actually have to figure out the magnitude of the overall net force and its direction. Mm -hmm. um, so we should keep going. That, that would be something that you would likely, be likely to see on the test. So now that we have the components of the net force, how can we figure out the magnitude and the direction of the net force? Um, I guess we could draw another two triangles. Excellent. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, it was so much fun doing these triangles. We should draw <laughs> one more set of triangles. That's exactly right. Now what you did is you drew a vector here. It sounds like maybe you're thinking that this is the overall vector. Yeah. But this actually doesn't represent um, the overall vector. One way you can see that is um, using the head-to-tail method, the overall, well actually it's not that far from the overall vector in a sense. I guess the overall vector would kind of look like this. It should go from the initial point to the final point over here. But I thought they go like head-to-tail. Well, if we start here, if we first draw this force and then this force, overall we've gone from here to here. Yeah. So this would be the overall vector um, if these were the individual vectors. They point from the initial tail to the final head, from the initial tail to the final head. Okay. But this is not a reliable way to draw the vector because I didn't make any effort to draw these to scale. Yeah. Um, so there's no reliable idea, idea that this is going to be reliable. I actually would not draw the overall vector in this picture. I'm just going to draw a separate triangle. We already know what the overall vector looks like. Well, I'll just take you through how to do that. Should the x component of the overall vector be pointing left or right? Um, x component should be pointing left. Based on this. Yeah. So here's the x component. 
and I know that has a length of negative 0 0.0082. And then should the y component be pointing uh, up or down? Down. Now I'm not going to draw that over here, although I, actually I guess you could. I guess it doesn't really make, I don't know if it makes, no, I, I, no it's better, you have to draw it here. Head to tail method, where the head of the first vector ends has to be the tail of the next vector. So using the head to tail method, we'll draw the y component here. Negative 0.00377. And now let's draw the overall vector. Right. That's right. The overall vector, or the resultant, goes from the initial tail to the final head, from where we started to where we ended up. So this will be the overall net force here. Now there are other triangles you could have drawn. If you had drawn the y component first, and then the x component, then your triangle would look like this. Well, that could be fine too. So there's two different triangles you could end up with, depending on whether you drew the x or the y component first. So we just have to take our time. In this, um, in this case, we draw the components first. Notice that for the individual forces, we drew the overall hypotenuse first, and then broke it into components. But for the net force, what we know is the components. So we draw those first, and then we draw the hypotenuse as the overall vector. OK, now how can we figure out what this net force is? Um, simpler than that. Oh, so actually we don't need two triangles here. Oh, we just want to find that x yeah. value, so we would just use the um, uh, triangle, to do what? Um, oh, but so we don't know any angles, do we? Yeah, we don't know any angles yet, but there's still a straightforward way to find oh, this hypotenuse. Pythagorean theorem. That's right. Yeah. We can just use the Pythagorean theorem to find this net force. Let's go ahead and work that out on paper. The Pythagorean theorem says that the leg squared plus the leg squared is the hypotenuse squared. Okay, so now we figured out the magnitude of the net force. And the last thing to do is to figure out the direction of the net force. A lot of people would forget to do this and lose credit. Now, how can we describe the direction of an overall vector? Uh, with the angle? Yeah, we've talked about that. How do you describe the direction of components with sines? But we've talked about how you can't use a sign for an overall vector. We figure out the angle for the overall vector. So how can we do that? Okay. Um, it's probably best to make it the angle, well, either of who? Can we use, does it doesn't matter which angle? It's probably best to use the angle at the tail. The oh. angle that the vector makes is the angle it makes at its tail. So it's probably better not to focus on this angle, because that's the angle of the head. So let's focus on the angle that the tail of the arrow is making. Okay. That's what I think what instructors think of when they think of the angle that the vector is making. So, since we know all the negative sign matter, it, we should drop that out. That's a good question. When we're doing trigonometry, we're just working with lengths. Well, lengths are positive. In fact, that's why it doesn't make sense to put negative signs in the Pythagorean theorem either, even though that doesn't matter because you're squaring it. But when you're dealing with geometry, everything's positive. Mm -hmm. So you remember from Sokotoa that this is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the opposite here would be O 
0377, and we just figured out the hypotenuse, 009. Yeah, and you should make a note, when you're working with trig, you just put in positive numbers. Okay. You actually could get the wrong answer if you put in negative numbers. So. Yeah. So you'd have to take the arc sign to get the theta by itself. I guess that's the sine negative one key on your calculator. So what answer did you get? Uh, 24.76 degrees. Right, you want to make sure you're in degrees mode, but you are. So that would be this angle here. <laughs> 